This is going to be a traffic accident investigation, a vehicular manslaughter felony hit and run um, collision. Although it is linked to the Leeds uh, murder, the 187, uh, you're not going to refer or connect to that incident uh, during this investigation or in your report. Uh, the, we'll use the day uh, three days after the Leeds murder, so it's going to be on a Wednesday. It's going to be about 1,300 hours. Uh, the location of the uh, accident is going to be at Palos Verdes Drive North and Hawthorne Boulevard. Uh, it is a, a four-way intersection there, and uh, you're going to hear a dispatch of a felony hit and run, uh, 901T, which means a traffic collision with injuries, at that location, and you're supposed to respond. And uh, in the dispatch, it's a possible fatal. When you arrive, you're going to discover that it is, in fact, a fatal traffic collision. Uh, there's a green sedan in the intersection that... Um, with, that was driven by a woman. Uh, you'll have to create the identity for that woman, but you can make her in her 20s or 30s. Uh, you can make the car whatever you wish to. In any event, uh, you'll find the woman slumped over the uh, steering wheel. Uh, paramedics are right behind you, and they are going to uh, check her and confirm that she's dead. You'll note that she has uh, massive head injuries, uh, blunt force trauma, uh, and also uh, confirmed death. At that point, you're going to want to establish uh, traffic control um, and begin your investigation. Uh, at various points throughout uh, this videotape, uh, I will talk about uh, the various segments that we have been working on. Uh, we'll have our, our normal initial observation, your first arrival at the scene, which I just alluded to, followed by uh, statements from three witnesses uh, a traffic scene investigation in which I will go over the evidence um, that is pertinent to this incident. And then I will summarize the evidence and we will discuss the conclusion and also the forms. So uh, having said that, uh, prepare to take notes and view the rest of the videotape. All units, report of a 901T possible fatal TC. Hit and run just occurred. PV Drive and Hawthorne Boulevard. Suspect vehicles, an older model, blue van, partial California license, 579 George, with major front end damage. Suspect is a white male adult, tall, blonde hair. Suspect last seen eastbound on PV Drive, paramedics en route. 901 Tom, handle report, 901 David, 902 David, 903 David, assist. one Tom, 10-4, ETA about 3. Now, I think at one Tom 97, I'm going to need additional traffic control. Uh, this is a fatal. Paramedics are on scene. 901 Tom 10 4, 905, and 9L David respond to the intersection of PV Boulevard and Hawthorne. Assist units in traffic control for a 901 T 20001. As you arrive at the uh, intersection, uh, you can see that the intersection is blocked and you request traffic control. You notice a green sedan in the intersection facing uh, southwest with major front end damage. The left rear wheel is bent under the frame of the car and there's a female slumped over the steering wheel. The paramedics uh, are working on her and advise you that uh, she is dead. She has major blunt force trauma to her head. You need to request the coroner and uh, at some point uh, shortly after that the paramedics will remove her and transport her to Little Company of uh, Mary Hospital pending arrival of the coroner. Also, uh, a tow truck is requested. Palos Verdes Drive North and Hawthorne Boulevard is a four-way intersection. Hawthorne runs north and south. It consists of two lanes in each direction with a third right-hand lane uh, for turn purposes. There is a tri-phase signal for this intersection with signaling devices in each direction. There are also left turn arrows. All signals are func functioning normally. Once traffic uh, control has been established and uh, the victim has, uh, has been uh, taken care of, you need to begin your investigation, which will start with your witness interviews.
Yeah, hi, I'm Officer Lewis, and I understand uh, uh, you saw this traffic accident? Oh, yeah, I just saw it a few minutes ago. What, what did you see? Tell me what happened. Well, I was driving down Hawthorne northbound. You know, it was just another day. It was a pretty bright day. No, it wasn't raining or anything. And traffic was going about 40, 45. And I was just driving the road, listening to music, when all of a sudden I heard the screeching noise to my left. I look, and all of a sudden I see this blue van come by and smash into this green car. The green car seemed to spun around, and I remember, like, he was really close to me. I almost got hit, so I actually slammed on my brakes as well. What would you say you saw him come? Where was he coming from? He was coming eastbound on PV Drive North. He was going pretty fast, that's for sure. Oh, so he was coming from the west going eastbound? Mm-hmm. And what color was the signal for? Uh, it was green for sure. For, for, and also for the car in front of you? For the car in front of me as well. Okay, now that would be the lady that uh, is in that green car over in the intersection right exactly. now? Exactly. Okay. Uh, now, did so the light was green for you. The light was green. Could you uh, uh, make out uh, or determine how fast the car was going? What was the first thing that attracted your attention? I heard tires screech and I heard a loud... Okay. And uh, I just turned my head and I saw it, so I immediately hit the brakes because... Okay. Was, so, yeah. so then what happened after that? Well, the blue van smashed in the car, spun around, and then the, um, I got pretty close. I mean, I came to a complete stop, and I was pretty close to what happened, or the scene was. Right. I saw a woman in the green car. It was about an 80s green Chevy, I believe. Okay. And her, I, she looked unconscious. I wasn't really sure what happened to her. But then I, the blue van stopped momentarily. A man came out. He yelled some words. I, I couldn't really understand what he was saying. It was pretty, like, quick. But then he was a pretty big white guy. I noticed he was a, a tall, pretty tall white guy. He had yeah. long blonde hair and a ponytail. And, uh, and he looked like he had a little bit of a stomach. And he was wearing a white T-shirt and pants. All right. And, uh, yeah, he yelled something out. He looked at the green car. And then he just hopped back in and just sped off. And that was the last that I saw of him. Well, where did he go? He went, um, continued eastbound on PV Drive. Okay. Right. Now, uh, did you happen to get the license number? No, I didn't actually. All right. Now that uh, it was a blue van. Yeah, it was a blue uh, van. Did you see anything uh, that you could distinguish from the van? Anything that other you can describe in addition to the fact it was blue? What kind of a van was it? It looked like an older van. Okay. Let me see. Do you know what a cargo van is? Not too. You know, like the bakery and the the um, commercial co uh, companies use their. They don't have mm. windows. It looked more of a, mini a minivan to me, I think. Okay, minivan. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get a license? Oh, you didn't get a license number. No, I went to the side of the car. Can you identify uh, this guy if you were to see him again? I could definitely identify him again. The car, I know for sure the front was pretty smashed and pretty bad. And I think I saw some smoke coming out of it as it was taking off. Okay. Uh, and you can d identify the van again if you were to see it? I think I could. Okay. Uh, anything else you can add? That, uh, mm, well, I, I saw Tom smoke coming out from the tires when he was hitting the guy, and I heard glass shatter. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome, sir. Hi, I'm Officer Lewis. Uh, I'm conducting an investigation on this traffic accident, and I understand you may have seen something. Yes. Can you tell me what you saw? Yeah, I was heading um, east on PV Drive. And I was, I was going about 35, 30 miles an hour, um, approaching a red light. And I was in the curbside lane, number two lane, I think. And then I see this blue van in my rearview mirror coming up, must have been about 80, 90 miles an hour. Comes up, he's flying right behind me, and he swerves around me into the number one lane. And then I see him go come by me, and I'm starting to brake, and he just cuts me off. And at that point, he just hits his brakes slides right into the intersection and hits a green car. Okay, now he uh, he hit his brakes uh, uh, as he passed you or yeah. just, we forget in front of you? Yeah. As he did, did he cut, when you said he cut you off, he swerved to, to the right? Yeah, yeah, he swerved into my lane and into my lane and just hit, took out a car in the intersection. And, and the, what color was the light at that time? Uh, the light was definitely red. And what, were you preparing to slow down at that time? Or yeah, yeah, like? that's, why, that's why I was about 30 miles an hour, because it was red. Did, did you have to uh, uh, take any evasive action uh, when, he, when he cut in front of you? Yeah, I definitely, he, he almost took the front of my car off, so I had to definitely hit the brakes. And I, I didn't start skidding, but I definitely applied the brakes pretty hard. So then he hit a car in the intersection. What, what happened after that? Um, well, he, he hit a car, a green car in the intersection that was that was heading north on Hawthorne, and 
they just he just took her out and he got out of the car and went up to the to the car that he hit and looked inside and he ran back got back in his car and took off which way did he go he was he headed the same direction he headed uh it'd be east on pv drive did you uh, get a description of the driver yeah he was a tall white male um long blonde hair like shoulder length mm -hmm. um and he was wearing a white shirt and blue jeans okay uh did did you get the license number of the car yeah i got, van, I, got I, mean? I got a partial license okay number. and what was that it was 579g as in uh gregory it was california plate yeah and you couldn't see the rest of the uh the plate the numbers no no it was it was a dark blue van though okay and uh, have you ever seen this guy before no could you identify him again if you were to see him again definitely how about the van yeah well, because of the accident, obviously, and uh, it was a dark blue van. Could you see uh, any damage uh, to the car? To, to the van, I mean? Yeah, the front end was crumpled in, but, but it wasn't bad enough that he couldn't drive off. Are you the person who called the, uh, the police? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for your information, and we appreciate it. We may be in touch with you. No problem. Yeah, hi, I'm Officer Lewis. I'm conducting an investigation on this traffic accident that uh, we have here. I understand you may have seen something. I did. I saw everything. Tell me about it. Well, I was walking east on PV Drive North when I came to a stop at a crosswalk at um, PV Drive North and, um, and Hawthorne when I noticed a blue van fly right by me like right right at the intersection he I, like, I noticed it because he slammed on his brakes slid completely across the intersection mm -hmm. he clipped a um, green car I, I really don't know the make or model of it okay but he clipped it at right when he uh, came to a, a slide at the intersection a uh, car was traveling down Hawthorne mm -hmm. and um, he clipped it it spun out and it came to a stop okay uh, what happened after that? Well, the van did stop, and um, momentarily, then it drove. Then he drove off again. Did you get a look at the driver at all? I did, but um, all I noticed that he was ha he was a big guy with blonde hair. Okay. Uh, what what race? What nationality? Possibly Caucasian. Okay. Uh, w when he took off, did you see which way he went? Yes, he did. He drove uh, east on PV Drive North. I did okay. see that. Uh, did you get the license number at all? No, okay. I did. Uh, did you get a good enough look at this guy to identify him if you were to see him again? Yeah, I would definitely be able to identify him. Okay. Now, now you were on the corner, so about how far do you think you were from uh, where this guy ended up? Um, I would say 50 feet. Okay. Now, what, what first attracted your attention to uh, this van? You said it was a van, right? Right, it was a van. and. I first noticed them because, um, or the van, because as he was driving down PV North, he, um, PV Drive North, he was swerving and um, changing lanes. It seemed like he was driving maybe 100 miles an hour, you know. Okay. And um, then, the, um, then he came to a screeching halt, and there was tire smoke, and okay. um, I could smell the rubber burning, burnt rubber. Now, now, what color was the light for eastbound traffic at that time? Eastbound traffic, the light was definitely red. Okay. And so let me summarize then. Okay. So you're walking, uh, you're on the north side of PB Drive, you're walking east. Yes. And you come to the signal there at Hawthorne Boulevard. Correct. Right? While you're waiting for the signal to change, it's red at that time. Correct. While you're waiting for it to change, you, you become aware of the fact something's going on behind you and, and off to your right. Correct, to my right. So you, did you hear sounds, screeching tires or anything? Yes, uh, loud screeching tires. And so, so then you turn, at that point you see this van, it was sliding around through traffic and slides in the intersection, wheels were locked up or locked braking. Locked wheels. And he goes into the intersection and then he hits the green car? Correct. And which way was the green car going? He was driving northbound on Hawthorne. Okay. And then... Uh, after the after the collision, the guy gets out. 
Uh, Did you well, see him get out of the car? I just saw the van stop, and I kind of got a glimpse of the okay. guy because um, traffic, um, a few um, cars were blocking my vision okay. at the time. Okay, and then so then, then then he took off eastbound on PB Drive. Correct. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, if we need to talk to you, we'll get in touch with you. Thank you. One of the first things we want to uh, document in this investigation is the point of impact, the POI. And you can find the point of impact uh, by first locating the uh, deceleration skids, uh, which are located uh, just west of the intersection and conclude uh, at about the point of impact. The point of impact uh, is uh, found primarily by uh, the debris, uh, uh, dirt from the undercarriage of the, uh, of the vehicles, and uh, various uh, vehicular fluids that have dripped uh, into that location. Uh, the point of impact is 15 feet west of the east curb line of Hawthorne Boulevard and six feet north of the south curb line of Palos Verdes Drive North. Now you need to uh, document that information and you're going to draw that in on your, uh, your traffic accident sketch uh, later. Now looking at the skid marks, uh, oh by the way, before we get to the skid marks, make sure you take a photograph of the point of impact, the debris left at that location. The skid marks uh, consist of four uh, deceleration skids uh, that you've been able to identify. Uh, they start approximately in the uh, number uh, two um, eastbound lane on PV Drive North, uh, extending into the uh, number one lane into the intersection and ending at the point of impact. You need to measure those skid marks and they are as follows. The left front measures 175 feet. The right front measures 178 feet left rear 171 feet, right rear 180 feet. Now for uh, 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 later use you're going to need to know that the coefficient of friction is 0.16, uh, correction, 0.65. Lane number one in Hawthorne Boulevard is 12 feet uh, wide in width. Lane number two is uh, 22 feet up to where the right, right turn lane begins and at that point, lane number two is also 12 feet wide. The right lanes are 10 feet wide. Those were the turning lanes, the right turn lanes. And the left turn pockets are also about 10 feet wide. There's a raised center median on a Hawthorne Boulevard. Up to the beginning of the left turn pockets, the center median is about four feet across, at which point the left turn pockets begin and it narrows to about a foot and a quarter or 1.25 feet. I mentioned earlier that there's a tri-phase signal for the intersection, uh, signals in all directions with left turn arrows, and all signals are functioning normally. Weather is dry, and the roadway condition is good. In examining the vehicle before it's towed away, you do note that there is extensive left rear damage, and as mentioned earlier, the left uh, wheel actually is bent under the frame. Make sure you take a photograph of that wheel. You'll also notice there is some blue uh, paint transfer in the damaged area, the left rear of the victim's vehicle. You'll need to collect that uh, paint transfer in the manner that uh, you have been taught. Uh, as a reminder, that's with a single-edged razor blade, uh, scraping the paint onto uh, some uh, surface, probably a, a paper bindle. You also need a control sample of green paint from that vehicle in an undamaged area take a photograph of the damage to the vehicle uh, and also get a photograph of the victim before she is uh, removed. Make sure you take a photograph of the skid marks that were uh, discussed earlier. Additionally, uh, back in the point of impact area, uh, you also find a couple of pieces of physical evidence. There appears to be a blue Ford emblem uh, that is in the debris area. You want to collect that. There's also a piece of a wiper arm uh, that is in that area along with some broken glass. Uh, you need to collect uh, that piece of the wiper arm. Uh, in terms of uh, evidence then, uh, your evidence will consist of the photographs of the skid marks, the point of impact, uh, the victim, uh, photographs of the damaged area, 
along with the paint transfer and the uh, wiper arm and the Ford emblem. Uh, that should conclude uh, your traffic scene investigation. The car has been towed now. Uh, the victim has been removed to Little Company Mary Hospital pending um, the coroner's arrival and the scene has now been uh, cleared and open. You've now had an opportunity to simulate your investigation. Um, you've had a look at the traffic scene. I provided you with data concerning uh, the important uh, evidence items. Uh, I'd now like to briefly review uh, the narrative and also uh, I would like to give you some instruction on the forms and the sketch that you're going to draw. In the narrative, uh, your preliminary information is going to be your dispatch as it has been in all of our uh, uh, scenarios that we've used in this course. Uh, you will uh, then go to the initial observation. Uh, don't forget to describe the scene. I gave you uh, information concerning the scene description, what it looks like, uh, the uh, functionality of the signals, the condition of the victim, and uh, the, the fact that she had been determined to, to be dead. Um, and in included in that information was the uh, description of the, uh, of the roadway. Following that, I'd like you to uh, begin your, uh, your statements, your witness statements. There are three witnesses to this incident. There was a reporting party who uh, had been driving uh, northbound on Hawthorne Boulevard uh, behind the victim vehicle by about three car lengths, as you may recall. Uh, she heard screeching to her left, screeching of wheels. By the time she turned, uh, she saw a blue van slide into the intersection. Uh, striking the green vehicle and spinning it uh, around so that it was now facing to the southwest uh, with uh, damaged, uh, damage to the left rear. A second witness uh, had been traveling eastbound on Palos Verdes Drive north and the uh, number two lane and was passed suddenly by a blue van. Uh, initially uh, he came up behind her, swerved around her and in fact cut her off to the extent that she had to uh, slow down to keep from hitting him. He locked his wheels up, his brakes up, and slid into the intersection and she saw him strike uh, the uh, person in the green, uh, van, the green sedan and then uh, leave the scene eastbound on Palos Verdes Drive. The first witness that I uh, spoke of a few minutes ago also uh, saw the uh, driver of the vehicle and described him and she uh, got a partial license plate. It was 579G as in George, uh, which she reported to the police. Finally, there was a pedestrian uh, who was standing on the uh, northwest corner. Uh, he was able to confirm that the light was uh, red for east-west traffic and that the uh, driver of the van uh, driving rapidly slid through uh, the, van, the intersection past the red light uh, prior to striking uh, the victim vehicle. That is basically a summary of your witness statements. I'd now like you to uh, write the traffic scene investigation section. Make sure that you describe the scene, uh, the evidence in the scene, uh, including the point of impact, uh, the items of evidence in the point of impact, the debris, uh, the skid marks, the condition of the vehicle, and any evidence collected. Uh, also include any photographs that you've taken of the scene. At this point, uh, you're going to need to um, then uh, write your conclusion. Now, in the conclusion, you need to summarize, in your view, how the traffic accident occurred. Now, your conclusion is going to be uh, maybe a little shorter than those we've used for the crime reports. Basically, you need to identify the violations, who was responsible for the collision, who caused it, and what violations caused the collision. It's also in this area, uh, in this section, that I want you to document uh, the uh, standard formula for determining speed from skid marks. Uh, you may recall that the formula is uh, MS, meaning minimum speed, equals the square root of ALS times 30 times CF. ALS stands for average length of skid. CF stands for the coefficient of friction, which I've told you was 0.65. 
Also remember that we're referring to uh, the person responsible for this collision as party one and the victim as party two. I don't want you to calculate, to, sh to show your, your calculations and your, your process that you used in your narrative uh, in this conclusion, but I want you to list the formula and the language should be something like this. Based upon the standard formula for estimating speed from skid marks, where MS equals the square root of ALS times 30 times CF, where ALS equals, and that's whatever the average length of skid is you've determined, CF equals 0.65, I determined that party one was traveling a minimum speed of, and then go ahead and include whatever that uh, result was. And that's going to be your conclusion. List the violations and the cause. On to uh, the forms and any attachments that you need. Uh, the basic form is the uh, California Highway Patrol 556, uh, correction 555 form, uh, and we've discussed that in class. Make sure that you fill it out completely. Uh, there are some key areas that uh, sometimes students tend to overlook. Uh, for party number one, you're going to need to put in the probable, uh, the primary collision factor, the PSF, uh, and list the vehicle code violation for that. Make sure you put the direction traveled and the uh, various information that we have on that person and uh, the vehicle. Now we don't know his name so you're going to have to list him as unknown fled scene. For party two you should have all of that information and you should show no violations for her. Uh, she uh, for probable, uh, the pri I'm sorry, the primary collision factor, the PCF, uh, you're not going to list anything but you fill in the rest of the blanks as required. On the back side of that form uh, is a series of uh, checkoffs as it relates to the incident, uh, the scene and the incident. Don't forget to check off the appropriate blocks. In the lower right hand corner, uh, there's a place for miscellaneous information. Uh, I would like you it, in this block to put down the following information. One, I want the uh, skid mark data from the four wheels. Two, I want the point of impact information, and three, I want the color of the suspect vehicle. On the lower left hand side there's a space for a sketch. We are not going to use that block. Just say see attached. The next form is the 556 form and on the 556 form there's a place for listing uh, uh, the witnesses for listing injured parties. Uh, it's a multi-purpose form so uh, uh, you'll be able to use it for all of those purposes. Uh, list the uh, uh, whatever you have on the suspect on party one. Uh, party two's injuries because she was injured, obviously fatal injury, and your, uh, your three witnesses. On the back side of the 556 form is a place for your sketch. Uh, putting it in a, uh, a landscaped uh, format, a landscape position, uh, you need to draw in uh, the collision, the, the intersection with the data that I've given you. Uh, you need to uh, use 90 degree angles on uh, the point of impact data that I gave you. Uh, using the prolongation of the curb line uh, to set off your, your uh, lines and angles. You need to draw in the uh, four skid marks and add the uh, measurement data for them. Make sure you give it a proper heading. Remember that north is always up. And put in a legend because you're also going to have to add uh, the physical evidence that we talked about. Uh, in addition to the point of impact, that would include the Chevron, uh, the Ford, uh, symbol and also the uh, partial uh, windshield wiper arm. That is your sketch. Those are your forms. Uh, you'll, I'll provide you with additional handouts to uh, supplement the data. Uh, you may uh, begin your report.